Hey guys, welcome back to Goodworks Tractors. Today we've got a different type of video, not a tractor comparison, not a new attachment, not how to prepare for this or that. No, today is a customer showcase. Back in November, we put out a call for anyone who had made a custom modification to their tractor to email us, show us the picture, and we'd put them together if we got enough. We got a good amount of submissions, and we're just gonna walk through those today. The customers usually explain to us exactly what they did, so we'll explain that in turn to you. Of course, if you have an idea, do one of two things. Either leave a comment below, Maybe the inventor will see it and implement it in version two. Or if you fabricated something yourself, take a picture or better yet, a video and email it to us. If this video goes well and we get enough submissions, we'll make part two. And one more note for you keen listeners, this isn't Courtney, this is his brother, Chris. I'll be hosting today's video. And just before we get into this list, I wanna remind you that we are sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers, bulletproof off-road adapters. If you want the absolute best, buy from Bora, sourced in America, made in America, hub-centric. They're available in steel or aluminum in dimensions from 1.5 inches to 6 inches wide. These are easy to install. Courtney and I made a video installing them on his 1025R, and if we can do it, you can definitely do it. So check out Bora Wheel Spacers. And of course, if you like the video, pressing that like button, the thumbs up icon, is a big help to the video, to the channel, and to us. Of course, if you don't like it, press the dislike button, and maybe let us know in the comments what you would have preferred to see. But the comments are a great section for us all to get a little bit smarter and a little bit better through our collective knowledge. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this list with the first entry. First submission is from Craig. He says, hey Courtney, attached is my take on a decent differential lock pedal. Stainless steel plate with pointed set screws, then welded underneath. Attached with a split collar. Works great. Thanks. Love the YouTube videos. Learn a lot. Thanks, Craig. Looks like it's a substantial steel plate. Quarter inch, maybe five sixteenths. Those set screws, uh, those must just be something you can pick up at the hardware store. They actually remind me of the track spikes we'd put in our shoes back running track. Obviously way less pointy and obviously to provide grip as well. Um, looks like a great solution. Got grip for your heel and no chance of that thing bending. Nice one. I like it a lot. I'm going to guess the majority of that fab time came down to drilling holes for those set screws. Either way, not too much time probably involved and a handy little device for your heel. Next one comes from Eric Larson. He says, I've always moved heavy amounts of leaves off my yard as opposed to mulching heavy amounts. In the past, we raked and blew them into piles, but put them in a pickup and raked them out of the truck into a compost pile away from the yard. This year, I got a set of pallet forks and built a box for the front. I loaded the box from piles of raked and blown leaves, took it a distance off the yard, slipped the front out and dumped it using the loader frame. Five bolts hold the box to the forks. Very simple, very easy to use, and a whole lot less work. Wouldn't want to fill the box full of firewood, but it worked great for leaves and almost as many cubic feet as a short box pickup. This one seems more up my speed. I know I can cut some two by fours and screw them together. This is, just looks like a great solution. Leaves do nothing but pile up and pile up and pile up unless you stay on them in the fall and they really can accumulate volume quickly. So this is a smart way to have your tractor do the majority of the moving of those leaves. I like it. Our next idea comes from Patrick who says, finally got my lights installed, all wheeling amber LED flashers and rigid DXL LED work lights. Well, those are sweet. I can imagine you'll be seeing something like that on one of Courtney's tractors, should he decide to keep it long enough. Courtney's a big pusher of safety. If you've watched the videos, you know, and he's constantly moving his tractors down the road from the shop to the house, and then he's pushing snow and plowing snow. And so, visibility, he kicks his flashers on every time, but and he's got good work lights if he's driving a cab tractor, but that's better than anything I've seen. Patrick, that's really nice. Robert says, I needed to add a rear hydraulic top link to my 2018 1025R to better use my RC2048 box blade and balance the supplemental rear weight. So this one feels pretty ingenious. Robert's taken the same logic that the 260 backhoe has, takes the power beyond flow, runs it to a control, 
instead of to a backhoe hydraulic, he's run it to a rear top link hydraulic. And the control sits right where his toolbox used to. It actually looks like it's a backhoe control, though that I'm not sure. We know it is incredibly handy though to have that top link, and I love how he solved this problem. All right, our next one is from George, and I'm going to tell you now, you are going to see a lot from George in this video. George fabricated two steps for his tractor. The first you can see is a simple bolt-on minimalist step that I really like. The second one also attaches to the subframe with bolts. He put that on after he added an OTC cab to his tractor, so I think that aligns with the entry, but it does interfere with the mower deck. So that one comes on and off contingent on the mower deck usage and the cab usage. The first smaller one stays on there permanently. Both are great solutions and prevent you from stepping up on the mower deck and make that transition up to your operator platform much easier. Another quick one from George. He says, I made a grab handle to assist getting on and off my tractor easier. I thought back to the days I farmed with a 4020 John Deere and remembered the grab handle on the side of the cowl. I fabricated one similar to it and mounted it to the loader mast. I like the orientation of this one and I like the ergonomics of it for getting on especially. For getting off, I wonder if you have to exit the platform backwards to have the best use out of it, but you can still grab it from the side closest to the seat. Really nice again, George. This next one is from James and he says, I fabricated this including modifying the ballast box. The rack is bolted to the box. Obviously you can add vertical pipes for tools. Pipe insulation can make an interior handle gripper. However, if you fabricated a box, I think you could avoid drilling by simply using angled pieces or bolts to catch the front and rear lips on the ballast box. So that's in reference to this rack that he made on the ballast box. It's just a bolt-on rack. I shouldn't say just, I couldn't make that and it looks great. Um, a carrier to get the top platform of that ballast box useful to you. So I think that's really great. Then he goes on to show what he's calling a carrier, which is that meshed in box, which is almost like a steel frame version of what we saw earlier for the leaf collection, except that front wall is fixed. But James has rigged this up so you can connect it to the front or the rear. It almost looks like it's connected to a lightweight pallet fork frame. And I'm sure that's great for hauling debris or logs or tools or just things I'm not even thinking of right now. Really nice solution here. Next setup is from Sean who says, I added a silicone elbow cut to direct exhaust away from the loader frame and just over the front tire. What a lifesaver that is, I don't smell exhaust anymore. Uh, along with a slew of off the shelf mods including his seat cover and seat springs, his Muds Customs rear two inch receiver and tie downs, loader step, weld on front bucket hooks, he's got a lot. Looks like he also made a mid-mount mower deflector from a sacrificial mud flap so it won't break off when hit by an obstruction. Um, he's got Rob's light guards which I can't tell if he made or not. He refers to having them on a prior Kubota that saved them time and time again. He's added parking stands for his rear sweeper. He made, listen to this, he made an electric chute rotator with a wireless controller for his snowblower. It's a wiper motor that ties into a simple trickle charger connector on the battery, uses a Lovejoy connector to couple, and is completely reversible to the manual crank should it fail. That is impressive and way beyond me. For his ballast box, you'll see before it was filled, he gave us slots for rakes, shovels, a vise for chainsaw sharpening, and the carry sleeve, then he filled it with concrete. Um, he created his own attachment, a carry bracket for the quick hitch that allows two large trash bins to be lifted and transported easily down his driveway for pickup day. And then he wasn't done there. He picked up a Z-Track 717A, added a seat cover, but added lights for evening mowing. And he made the brackets and a harness and switch himself, tying it to the key switch so it won't be left on accidentally added some suspension to it as it was a hard pan set up from the factory back then using a motorcycle seat spring and some angle stock now sean is sean is going for everything sean obviously doesn't settle for status quo and i fully expect we'll be hearing more from sean and his custom mods in the future 
Next, we're back with our friend George, who says, Courtney, here's some step-by-step -step pictures of one of my recent projects. We start with a couple of squares of quarter-inch steel plate. We drill a couple of holes and trim a little steel off. Next, we'll do a little more trimming, make a couple of bends and some layout. More holes drilled. Project finished, painted, and installed. George, these are some impeccable looking tie-down attachment points. Really nice. Nothing about these gives you a homemade feel. They look like they're built to a professional standard. Ah, oh, heck, while we're here, let's do another couple of George's inventions. George says, I made a holder that slides into my tractor receiver hitch to hold limbs while I cut them with a chainsaw. It makes sawing up tree limbs less of a back-breaking chore when you don't have to bend over, since the height can be adjusted to whatever is comfortable. He says, I start at the far end and work my way towards the holder, cutting as I go, and there is no chance of accidentally touching the ground with the saw blade. Nice little invention, George. And George also says, Am I the only one that thinks quick hitch bushings are outrageously overpriced? I found a solution. I buy short lengths of thick wall steel tubing of the correct diameter, cut pieces to the right length, and drill for roll pins. I can make half a dozen sets for about $10. George, that's a great solution because most quick hitches do require bushings, but this is why we recommend the Spico E-Hitch Category 1 Quick Hitch. It does not require bushings. So save yourself the shopping trip, the labor, and even the $10 when you get the e-hitch. Of course, that is available at goodworkstractors.com. Next one's from Jesse running a 2008 John Deere 2520. He set up his eight horsepower Billy Goat leaf blower, modified to fit the front hit. So he runs that thing, blows all the leaves to the side, never leaves the seat. Does that beat a backpack blower? Sure seems like it might. Rodney sent us a picture of a box plate he modded up saying, here's an attachment I did for leveling the drive, but have ended up using it more on lawn leveling. It comes off easily and is adjustable. Looks like Rodney built a framework to hold two casters well behind the blade so that it won't dig and keeps perfect level with the surface. I think that's just simple and clever and I'm glad it's working out for him. Thanks Rodney. Next up is a message from Martin who, after he watched our ballast box video, decided to share one that he had made on his 4052R. Now it looks like he's put a few attachment points on the back also, perhaps a hitch receiver, and then a couple of clevis shackles on the side. I'm not sure if he's looking for just to drag something along or if he's got a specific idea of how he's using those. So Martin, if you see this, I'd love to see a picture of something attached there. Up next is a message from Josh who says, I took an air ride suspension kit off an X739 and installed it on my 1023E. It wasn't all that hard of an installation, the hardest part being robbing the harness off the 739 and modifying it to fit my tractor. Well, that sure seems like the majority of the project, Josh. I use the auxiliary lighting plugs to power the seat compressor so the lights need to be on to increase your seat pressure. I'm unsure as to the draw of the compressor, but so far no blown fuses. So well, that's great. As an added bonus, I've included a picture of my one-of-a-kind shop stool. Oh, real nice, Josh. Next up is a message from Shane who says he doesn't really have a tractor mod, but a storage idea. He didn't want to do the traditional pallet racking that takes up a lot of room, so he built this system out of 1 and 5 8 Unistra and a sheet of 3 quarter plywood. Mower deck rolls underneath for the winter. Box blade is set so you can back right into it with a three point at full height and fork pockets and top shelf for the bucket in the winter and plow blade in the summer. That is some compact storage right there, making use of a small space. Also featured a homemade plow built from six and a half foot snowway plow. Shane does not have hydraulics run up to the front so there's a black pipe in place of an actual cylinder. Shane, really great setup and I bet some people are hitting the pause button to take a closer look at your rack. We've got a message from Joseph who did a little Protero mod. He says he added a reducer and a corrugated 12 foot drain hose from Home Depot, which will give him a little extra reach. If, I, if I'm looking at this correctly, he's using this as a blower. So he's using that hose extension to reach out off the tractor and blow leaves, probably in front, while just out into the yard. And then it looks like he has uh, some pictures of the normal setup. And then it looks like he's connecting to a John Deere material collection system boot, which is actually belt driven from the mower. So he's increasing the suction power, I'm guessing. Maybe he's just sucking up every last thing except the grass. 
you guys are one resourceful bunch and just prove that where there's a will, there is a way. Jeff writes to us about installing a Summit hydraulic multiplier to run his snowblower on the back. He got a three port, which gives him two extra connections. It looks like he mounted to his ROPS, which he says he drilled through and John Deere would recommend never drilling through your rollover protection system. But that aside, he mounted the hoses at a height that he said are easy to manage. They're sort of right behind the seat. Um, he had to mill out a part of the bracket for mounting. And now with the controller switch mounted to his right, he's able to run hydraulics to the chute for rotation and then to the deflector with just the push of a button. Jeff, I'm glad that you understand electric way better than I do. And it looks like you've got a nice clean setup on that multiplier. I liked how you did the 90 degree fitting, gets rid of any extra hose clutter. Thanks for sharing, Jeff. Next, we hear from James again, who created his own way to mount a mirror to the loader. He uses a grab handle, but he's sort of inverted it, added a bracket to it, which he then connected to a Jeep mirror. I think maybe he rigged this up because he, his mirrors were moving on that single connection. Maybe they're pivoting down on him. He added some line X to the bracket he welded up. He said these mirrors do have some vibration, so next step is to look at a vibration dampening washer. And of course, who are we going to close out with other than our friend George? We've got a whopping five more from him, and that's not even all that he sent us. First off, he added some ends, some custom ends to his rear blade. Basically makes it like a mini snow pusher, rear snow pusher, so he can back drag snow um, against any sort of wall or garage door. I think I should refer to this as a snow puller not pusher. This next one is a very specific little tool. Looks like he carved out of a plate of steel, a steel post puller. Looks like you slip it over, attach it to your rear three point and drive away. Next, George saw the price of a tooth bar and flinched. So he decided to make his own, getting a piece of four foot flat steel stock, added a taper to it, added some holes so he can bolt it to the bucket. I'm not sure if he's bolted through the bucket or if he's treating those as set screws. Then he got some teeth, welded them to the stock. By the time he paints this thing, it looks right. After adding the load and go brackets to his mower, George created a bracket that hangs from his roof joist that that mower deck can hang off the ground and out of the way, taking up very little space throughout the winter months. And this last one might be most impressive. George created an underground cable layer, turning his three-point mounted single shank ripper into the cable layer by fabricating a wire spool holder, a feed tube, a coulter wheel to cut the sod, and then bolted that to the ripper shank. He then added a gauge wheel to keep the wire at a constant depth as it was being laid. In the end, he buried about 2,000 feet of fence wire in about 45 minutes. That is truly impressive, and that concludes the list of customer modifications that we received. To Courtney and I, we love seeing what you guys create. You guys are ingenious, and we know that necessity is the mother of invention. It's because you guys are using your tractors and you run into the limitations of the tractor or of the attachment or accessory that drives you into the shop to come up with something new. And that's exactly how many of these manufacturers began, is seeing a need and filling the gap in the market. So who knows which one of these products could end up becoming a major player for compact and subcompact tractor. Anyway, that's a wrap for today, guys. We really appreciate you tuning in. Once again, if you did like the video, please do press the like button. Leave a comment if you have any thought that came to mind or question. If you're looking for an attachment or an accessory, head to GoWorksTractors.com. Check out the 5% discount club, a whole bunch of products that you can save 5% on. And if you've customized your tractor, again, take a picture or a video, email it to us at GoodWorksTractors at gmail.com. We'd love to do another video like this because it's just a heck of a lot of fun to see and share what you all create. So that's a wrap. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.